Hey, Tap Brothers here, and today we're learning the, the dash, dash vault. vault. Now, the dash vault is going to be one of the basic fundamental moves that we're going to be learning in parkour. It's a vault, and you preferably, especially when you're first starting off, you want to vault or perform the dash vault on a thin area. This is a little too wide for beginners, but I'm going to be training on this today. But a little bit thinner, and rails is a little too skinny, so you want to just a good platform and about waist height is uh, perfect for this vault. Now this vault is very efficient, very fast, and it looks really cool. So that's one of the reasons a lot of people want to learn this vault is because it just looks awesome. So today I'm primarily just gonna be focusing on the technique um, for the more advanced techniques or the drills or the certain practice that we're gonna be doing for the vault. Make sure to check out our Parkour Academy. You can check it out in the description below. That's where you put all the details, all the scheduling, and the workouts for this move. So if you're familiar with the arch tutorials, we usually like to follow the training triangle. That's the, uh, the mental side, the physical side, and the technical side. We try to focus on those areas and we found that that's one of the best ways to learn um, the parkour movements. So first, I'm gonna go with the physical. I'm not gonna go into this too much, but I'm just gonna touch over it. The physical, as you can see with the dash vault, you're going in this position here. Basically, a V-sit here. So you can imagine if you can do a V-sit here, you have the core strength and the coordination here to go in that position, this move is gonna be a lot easier for you. It's gonna be more comfortable. So it's really important, and this is for all vaults, that we focus on this core strength here and the flexibility. Because a lot of people have trouble with the dash vault because if you think about it, having this flexibility here where you can at least touch your head to your knees is gonna allow you to easily get the dash and make it look really good too. So physical, that's what we need to be working on. One little exercise that will help build up that core, I'll give you one real quick. I got this from uh, gymnastics, but you keep your legs straight, place your hands either close to your hips or further up to add more resistance to make it a little bit more difficult. You're gonna place your hands down and just using your core, lift your legs up and down. It's gonna help build up that core strength and also that flexibility. All right, now let's break down the technique. So first, the run-up. Now the run-up is very important, and during this run-up, you wanna think of one thing especially. Uh, I see a lot of people mess up on this, and that is with the dash vault, you're gliding over the object. You're running, keeping that speed, and you wanna stay close to the object you're vaulting and go over it all the way through. So you're not gonna be running and jumping up and then down any pressure on this obstacle, that'll hurt your wrist and hit your butt pretty hard. So you wanna run and glide over it. So most of the obstacles that you're gonna be doing the dash is something that you can already run and jump over. This is just a way to get it more efficient and fast and clean. So with that in mind, because you wanna keep that in mind with your whole run up, you're gonna take a few steps, about 50, 60% speed at first, Drive with one knee up. So you're gonna be driving one knee up. And remember, your legs and hips are gonna be going in front of you, so you wanna make sure to drive this knee up in front of you. So you're gonna drive this up. As you're going over, you're going to bring the other leg to meet it. So one little quick drill you can do to work on that motion is stand next to the object or just in your own room or whatever and drive one knee followed with the next one and make sure to drive that knee up in front of you. So here, just so you have that technique. Because when we're running and jumping, both legs are gonna go in front, and then we go into the dash vault. So we got the run and jump down. Now let's break down the actual dash vault technique. So we've jumped up with that leg, we're going over, and now we're straighting, we're, we're meeting with the other leg here. So we drove that first leg, now we're meeting with the other one and we're going into that V-sit position here. Now one thing I wanna talk about is just a little technique here. Um, the hands need to be facing forward in the direction you're going. I see some people, they feel more comfortable to put their fingers back. We, uh, we don't wanna do this. We wanna have the fingers facing forward here. Now also, as we're jumping up, a lot of us, um, and this is, you can use this, this will help especially if we're not as flexible here, you're gonna lean slightly back. So this lean back will give us more room for our legs to shoot through and to clear the obstacle. Also, it can look cooler for, for technique. 
just because it's awesome. So plant the hands here. Your hands are going to be planting next to your hips. So if you weren't using your hands, your butt would land on the obstacle pretty much or glide over or slide over. So that positioning here, the legs are going to be straight in front of you. Now they can be either lower or higher. The more flexible you are, the higher you can go. So once we hit off here, this is the really important part is the finishing of the move. And that's where you're going to really use your arms and legs to help you get more speed. So the arms are gonna carry through like this and your chest is going to open up here. And then the legs are going to kick and snap down. So like that, so you have this motion here. It's like you have uh, almost like a pair of jeans, kind of like the kip motion. You're gonna be here, once you hit, and through. So we vaulted over the rail or the uh, obstacle with our dash. Now we're going into the landing. Now at this point, after you've done that motion of driving the hands, kicking out with the legs, getting back, we want to make sure at our landing point that our chest is upright, is not leaned back. You do not want to be leaned back at this point. So take away your speed and then possibly you'll slip. So you want to be at least upright, lean slightly forward so you can go into a run and be very efficient and have a lot of speed. Um, another thing is land on the balls of your feet. We talked about this all the time right here. Both, you can land with both feet or one foot at a time striding out. Depending on, usually if it's higher, you want to land with both feet so you can absorb. But if it's an uh, obstacle about this height, you should be good just to step out and continue that speed. So that's the basic technique with the dash fault. Now, all those different parts, the biggest thing is to put them together in a coordinated way. So think about this while you're doing the dash fault. It's basically like a wave. You want to be very smooth and coordinated while you're doing it. So you run up, move the hips forward, kick out, and done. So it's a very fluid motion. I'm going to try one more. Okay, now on to the mental side of the training triangle. This is where we're really going to focus on progression steps. This is uh, the one thing that really helped me in parkour was finding progression steps for each move. Because usually just learning the technique isn't enough. So the first progression we're going to do, I actually picked this one up from Jesse LaFleur. He's got a really good tutorial on the dash out right now. But you're going to run up and just jump onto the obstacle. Work on that motion of driving that leg up and having the legs in front and landing on top. So here, land on top. And then on the other side of the obstacle, you're just going to go into that almost act like you were doing the end of your dash fall. So here, place the hands close to the edge. Make sure to bring those hips and legs forward and down. So just repeat that over and over. Start with the jump, plant the hands down, and then drive down. Then, as you get more comfortable, because most of us at first won't be super flexible to just Go down. But as you get more and more comfortable with it, you start it from standing. Bring one leg in front here, plant the hands down, and go through. This is just a really easy, safe way to work on that motion and get comfortable with the obstacle that you're working with. Okay, the other technique, this is the way that I learned my dash, and that was taking my lazy vault and a lazy is going over like this and slowly straightening it out because the end of the lazy vault you can turn into basically a dash vault. So you start off from the side so that way you don't have to worry about clipping your feet here or not making it over or the accuracy here either. You can run up, put your hand on that part of the obstacle and then carry the hips over and carry the legs through. I found this just to be the easiest way. So once you start from this angle here, pretty much a straight lazy, you start to straighten it out over time. So you start here, and 
really focus on that ending motion and getting coordinated with it. Then you start to angle it up. Straightening it, adding more. And then as you're straightening out, try to get the legs closer and closer to being straightened over. So you go here. And then once you feel really good and comfortable, the all out dash. So those are some great progressions. It's going to be the easiest and safest way for you to get your dash fall and get it comfortable. At least in my opinion, those are the only ways that I was able to pick up the dash and get it comfortable. Now, to cover some of the problems that most people have with this fall, one is that fear of clipping at the beginning. Two is um, missing the obstacle with their hands. So they get over, but their accuracy here is off. And then three is their jump and their technique isn't good enough so they end up like slamming on their butt here on the way down or it's just they're just not able to put their hands down in that position here even when they're trying to lean back so, oh and uh, i'm going to mention one thing too okay so here you take the camera i got my hat on and stuff but uh one of the things i want to talk that he, i don't know if you mentioned or he was going to but is actually having the physical strength and flexibility to do the move that's probably the biggest uh, thing I see holding most people back with this move is that uh, the flexibility and the strength because for me and him we have built up the flexibility and strength to where I mean we can jump up on here and hold and just come out and if you don't have that really good strength or at least a you know a good base of strength and flexibility it makes this move ten times harder all right so I'm gonna give it back to Thomas so finish okay so, so with those problems uh, that I mentioned, the accuracy is going to come with repetition and just knowing because even over time I still don't know, like I know where my hands are going, I can spot it, but it, it came really with repetition and practice. So being able to fill that out and know your jump. The other thing is getting the jump good where you have speed and you're gliding over it because a lot of people will try to jump and their momentum's going down as they hit the obstacle. So remember the jump gliding over, um, those physical things that Jonathan talked about, those are the big things that's gonna help with these, with those problems I mentioned. So that wraps up the dash fall tutorial. Now, again, in the Parkour Academy, you can check out in the description below, this is where we add the uh, advanced techniques, the drills, the training, and the exact, um, exercises to build up that core that we were talking about. So as always, train safe. See you in the next video.